Hello guys, in today's video, we're gonna check out the best DSLR for video under $1,000 in this year. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I've tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability, and many more. To find out more information about these DSLR for video under $1,000, you can check out the description below. If you want to get a best quality DSLR for video under $1,000 according to your needs, then watch the video till the end, and then decide to buy. At the first position of our list, we have Canon EOS Rebel Tady. Canon's EOS Rebel Tady, also known as the EOS 850D, is a 24-megapixel DSLR camera that fits Canon's EF and EFS mount lenses. Like most DSLR cameras, the Rebel Tady comes with an optical viewfinder, which you can use when taking photos. It also has a responsive touchscreen interface and a live view experience on par with Canon's mirrorless camera options. The camera sensor size that comes with this model is an APS-C, which is standard in entry to mid-level DSLR cameras. The ISO in this specific camera model ranges from 100 to 25,600 and extends to 51,200 in some scenarios. With its 7 FPS continuous shooting, you can be sure to capture every single moment. In terms of autofocus, it has a 45-point all-cross typeface detect making it easy to track still and moving subjects. The viewfinder in this model is a bit dim compared with the electronic viewfinders of mirrorless camera rivals and even some rival DSLRs. The rear LCD is easy to see and crisp even under direct sunlight. Its full articulated mechanism allows framing from several angles, including selfies. Moving on to the next at number two with Canon EOS 90D. The Canon EOS 90D replaces the 80D which fits between the EOS 77D and EOS 7D Mark Roman II. What's new to the EOS 90D is the higher resolution 32.5 MP image sensor, a live viewfinder with eye detect, and 4K video capture. The Canon EOS 90D is the DSLR equivalent of the mirrorless Canon EOS M6 Mark Roman II. Since the specifications in these two cameras are similar, it seems like Canon has given its buyers the option to choose between a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. It has an ISO that ranges between 100 to 25,600 and expands up to a maximum of 51,200. The minimum shutter speed is 3rd ISIC, and the maximum shutter speed is 1 8,000 for mechanical and 1 16,000 sec for electronic. The 90D has a 3-inch, 1.4 ml CD screen that fully articulates and touch-enabled. You can navigate all the menus, including the Q menu, by touch. There are several available ports, including the mic input, remote cable, USB 2.0, HDMI, and headphone input. The EOS 90D estimates at 1,300 shots when shooting through the viewfinder, 450 shots when shooting in live view. The number three position is held by Nikon D7500 DSLR camera. The Nikon D7500 is a mid-range DSLR and gets many features from Nikon's flagship D500. It comes with a 20.9 MP APS-C CMOS sensor, which is excellent in most shooting conditions. It also has a 51-point phase detect AF, making it easy to track and shoot moving and still subjects. The D7500 is an 8 FPS burst mode. Looking at its physical appearance, not much has changed in the D7500's design compared to its predecessors. Although the D7500 sensor is 3 megapixels less than the D7200, it does not mean it's worse. The D7500 borrows its sensor from the D500. It is built for fast readout speeds and excellent image quality. Looking at the viewfinder, the D7500 has an 18.5 mi point and a magnification of 0.90 forks. There is also a sensor that turns the rear LCD off when the camera is to your eye. The updated ENEL15 battery offers up to 950 shots per charge. The memory card slot is at the side of the camera, making it accessible even when mounted on a tripod. Its single memory card slot supports Azai memory cards, but not as Roman II. If you are not a fan of the optical viewfinder, you can use the tilting touchscreen-enabled LCD screen. Touch operation lets you navigate the menus, playback content, and during live view shooting. 
Next at number 4 we have Canon EOS Rebel SL3 DSLR. The Canon EOS Rebel SL3 is the most recent model in Canon's lineup of ultra-compact DSLR cameras. It comes with a 24MP APS-C sensor with easy-to-use dual-pixel autofocus, an optical viewfinder with secondary 9 points autofocus system, 4K video capability, a fully articulating rear LCD touchscreen, Wi-Fi with Bluetooth for image transfer, and superb battery life. The Canon EOS Rebel SL3 shares most of its features with Canon's lineup of mirrorless cameras. The question here is, why would you choose the SL3 over a Canon mirrorless camera? It comes down to a matter of personal preference. For example, the Rebel SL3 has a viewfinder, while the EOS M50 does not have one. In simpler terms, an electronic viewfinder lets you easily preview your exposure settings, whereas an optical viewfinder allows you to see it more naturally. The out-of-camera JPEGs you get from an EOS Rebel SL3 is not the greatest in terms of noise, but for social occasions where overall exposure, color, and white balance are more important, the SL3 is a strong candidate. The number 5 position is held by Canon Digital SLR Camera. The Canon EOS 80D is the follow-up to the EOS 70D. It comes with a new 24-megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor that has Canon's dual-pixel on sensor phase detection AF system. Furthermore, it has a 45-point hybrid cross-type AF system. If you're someone that likes to shoot in wet conditions, the 80D is a great choice to pick. Its body is sealed against moisture and dust, made possible with its polycarbonate body and magnesium alloy frame. While the 80D does not support 4K video shooting, it does offer 1080-6 type capture and continuous AF during recording. A new headphone socket is also available to complement the microphone port. Looking closer at the 80D's image sensor, it marks the giant leap forward in Canon sensor development, offering a significantly better dynamic range than previous models. Dual-pixel AF allows for continuous autofocus during video capture and still capture. At the top of the camera, the left side is where you can find the mode dial, which is a locking apparatus to avoid accidental bumps. On the right are the LCD, drive butt, ISO butt, metering butt, and AF butt. In between the shutter release and the control dial is the AF area selection button. Tapping this button allows users to jump between the four autofocus area modes quickly. The number six position is dominated by Pentax KP DSLR camera. The Pentax KP DSLR camera comes with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor with controls and aesthetics that come largely from the full frame Pentax K1. It comes with standard Pentax features such as full weather sealing, in body five axis shake reduction, pixel shift resolution, and an interchangeable front grip system. The ISO in this DSLR ranges from 100 to 819,200. It has a 27-point AF sensor with 25 central cross-type points. Shooting moving subjects is a breeze thanks to the 7FPS continuous shooting mode. When looking at the build quality of the Pentax KP, it's superior. The KP weight makes it feel like it is made of pure metal, even if some plastic components are used in its construction. The interchangeable grips are one of the prominent features of the KP. The grips are available in a small, medium, and large grip that all fastens securely to the front of the Pentax KP. Battery life is probably the most significant compromise made in exchange for camera size. Due to its relatively small size, the Pentax KP takes fewer shots per single full battery charge. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Sony Alpha Anonity 9 Roman 2. The announcement of Sony's Anonity 9 Roman 2 proved that the amount is not dead at that time. The Anonity 9 Roman 2 was an improved version of the Anonity 9 to put it in the same level as DSLRs like the Canon 5D Roman 4 and Nikon D810. It comes with a 42 megapixel DSI CMOS imaging sensor. Best paired with the 399 on sensor PDAF points and 79 points for the dedicated PDAF sensor. Thanks to the dual SD card slot, this camera lets you store thousands of photos and hundreds of minutes of video. Shooting moving subjects is a breeze with a 12 FPS continuous shooting in RAW with continuous AF. Moving on to its video capabilities, the Sony Anonity 9 Roman 2 can shoot 4K Ultra HD 100 Mbps recording. The 5-axis and body image stabilization assists in reducing blur while shooting. The built-in Wi-Fi with NFC helps in the easy transferring of photos and videos to your mobile device. 
The ISO in this camera ranges from 100 to 25,600 and is expandable from 500 to 102,400. The weather sealed body in the Anonity 9 Roman 2 features a dedicated PDAF sensor separate from the imaging sensor. Unlike a DSLR, the mirror in a DSLT camera does not flip out of the way. Instead, it is semi transparent. Only part of the light it receives is sent to the dedicated AF sensor, while the rest of the light passes through the imaging chip. The number 8 position is held by Nikon D500 DSLR camera. The Nikon D500 is a 21 megapixel APS C DSLR camera that shoots up to 10 FPS. It features an autofocus system similar to the one in the Nikon D5. Many improvements in the D500 center around high speed shooting and sports photography. Aside from the significant upgrades to the autofocus system and shooting rate, there are major upgrades to video shooting capabilities, viewfinder, and connectivity options. Looking into the autofocus system, the D500 has a 153-point AF module with 99 cross-type points. The 10 FPS shooting allows for up to 200 shots. Without a doubt, much of the capabilities of the D500 are built around the ability to quickly autofocus and shoot. The 153-point autofocus offers near full-width coverage. Linking it with the 180,000 pixel RGB metering sensor allows for even better autofocus tracking. The ISO in the Nikon D500 ranges between 100 to 51,200. It is expandable from 50 to 1,640,000, giving flexibility to the users of this camera body. Like all F-mount Nikon DSLRs, the D500 is compatible with Nikon's F-mount lineup of lenses. And it has an astonishingly maximum shutter speed of 1 slash 8,000 seconds for the price range. Next at number 9, we have Pentax K70. The Pentax K70 is a mid-level DSLR that features a 24 MP APS-C CMOS sensor with on-sensor PDAF. It has a shake reduction and body image stabilization system, which is available in most of Pentax's DSLR range of cameras. The image sensor in this camera model enables the K70 to shoot 14-bit REW images at 6 FPS, which works well with its 11-point autofocus system. The nine points located at the center of the autofocus system are cross-type. The ISO in the K70 ranges from 100 to 102,400. It has a minimum shutter speed of 30 and a maximum shutter speed of 1 slash 6,000 sec. The implementation of auto ISO in the K70 is quite good allowing users to specify the maximum ISO and a rate that chooses a shutter speed threshold for the selected focal length. One of the best improvements in the K70 over its predecessors is the increase in depth and girth, making it even more comfortable to carry around, even with the camera's noticeable extra weight. With that said, the increase in the size raises questions why they did not fit a larger battery. On a single full charge, the battery rates at around 410 shots, which is the lowest in its class. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Nikon D5600. The Nikon D5600 replaces the long-standing D5500. The features between these two are identical, such as the same 24.2 MP APS-C CMOS sensor and the Xpeed 4 image processor, with an ISO ranging from 100 to 25600. It has a 39-point autofocus system where 9 are cross-type. The shutter speed in this particular model has a minimum of 30 and a maximum of 1 slash 4,000 sec. Looking into the optical viewfinder, the D5600 provides coverage for 95% of the frame, which is pretty standard for an entry-level DSLR camera. The rear LCD in the D5600 is a 3.2-inch variable angle touchscreen with a 1,037,000 dot resolution. In terms of connectivity, Nikon added its SnapBridge connectivity, which allows for constant connection between the camera and a smartphone device. This feature uses a low-energy Bluetooth connection wherein batches of images are transferred automatically from the D5600 to your smartphone devices. You also have the option to select individual JPEG images. You can also use SnapBridge to transfer videos and remote capture images over Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. That's all for today. We upload Cameron camera accessories review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.